Hi, everyone. I am Pastor Joe, and I want to welcome you to our Ignite worship service. As always, it is a blessing for me to be here with you as we continue to find our way through this Advent season. One of the things that um, I'm celebrating is the opportunity to um, be able to share this with you. Even though we can't be in person, we're still finding unique ways to do this, and we're trying to improve our audio and video each week. So again, I, I thank my sons for being here today and helping me do this. But again, um, I hope that each week that we are improving on how um, you are seeing this. I do encourage you to go to our um, um, Facebook page or our YouTube page if you're not on there. They are First UMC and Outreach Center, Columbus, Nebraska. And, and comment on these videos and let us know what you think. Let us know if you're moved by it. If you're watching this in another state, I have a friend of mine who lives in New York. And he posts on here occasionally. And I just, I want him to know that I really appreciate that. Um, and, and it makes me feel good to know that our message is going out farther than just our community. It reaches around the United States and possibly around the world. And the more that you share and like our stuff, the more that our message gets out. So again, thank you for all of you who are watching us. And I appreciate it. I, I just pray again that this is a time that we can come into um, comfort and joy as we move into Advent. One more thing, well, actually a couple more things. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook and or YouTube and you want to go to our website, you can go to our website at columbusfumc.com. We have a lot more information of what we're doing at our church. If you want to give to our church, there's a giving section on there, plus a calendar of events, and we're still getting a lot done. And so again, I want to welcome you to watch our Ignite, which is every Sunday night at 6 p.m. And then we're doing 10.30 um, Sunday mornings. And then there's a ton of youth and children's and um, crafts and cooking and other things that we're all doing on our, our, our media pages. So check those out because depending what you like, or maybe somebody's like, well, I don't really like that style of worship. Maybe you're going to love one of Sarah's worships or Cindy's worships. So really let people know uh, what we have out there. Speaking of resources, hopefully everybody in our church has got one of these. This is the Advent devotional. This is exceptionally powerful. And I've really enjoyed reading through this. So I want to encourage you to, if you haven't got one, let the office know that you like one of our Advent devotionals and we'll, we'll get one to you the best we can. And so with that, let's go into our Invitation of Hope uh, video, please. We live in times where darkness approaches from all sides. God's creation, his precious children are under constant threat of isolation, despair, and a lack of purpose. But Jesus called his church the light of the world, a city upon a hill, alive with the fire and power of the Holy Spirit. Together, we can fight the darkness. Together, we can beat back the shadows. And it happens through the simple act of invitation. An invitation can rescue the isolated, connecting them with a loving, devoted community. An invitation casts out despair, replacing it with joy, peace, and salvation. An invitation can guide those seeking purpose to the ultimate mission of God's kingdom, a lifelong journey of growth, outreach, and service, a chance to change the world. In this season of Christmas, it begins with a simple choice, to let our light shine to make an invitation of hope. As we light the candle of peace, the light of the world, hope of humanity is coming. Jesus Emmanuel, our Savior and friend, is coming. Our hope is in you, God. Our life is in you. 
We believe that Jesus Christ is working right now to save the world, and we want to follow Jesus. Grant us the strength and the courage to share our hope with the hurting world. We thank you, loving God, that you keep your promises. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Psalms. Um, verse 85, I'm sorry, let's try that again. Our first reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 85, verses 10 through 13. Unfailing love and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the earth, and righteousness smiles down from heaven. Yes, the Lord pours down his blessings, and our land will yield its bountiful harvest. Righteousness goes as a herald before him. Prepare the way for his steps. Please join us as we sing our opening song, Prepare the Way.
one of the things we've been able to do is um, bring the um, Ignite worship team in and record um, a bunch of songs and make them a little higher quality. That way you guys get to hear um, what we'd maybe hear in person. So I, I pray that the songs we hear tonight lift you up. Um, we come into this time of prayer. And um, as much as I love the music and the message and um, just um, a lot of things we got to do here, um, this time of prayer has really become very important to me. And I, and I love what we've been able to do as as we continue to think about um, really focusing on the needs of our congregation and those who are around us. So if you have any prayers right now, know that myself um, and Pastor Cindy watch worship at this time. Please, um, if you have prayers that you want to lift up, go ahead and put them. And we are focusing on our needs right now. There'll be a time for celebrations a little bit later, but right now we're focusing on... Um, illnesses and just prayers just for God's intervention somewhere or prayer for support or whatever it is you need right now to be strengthened. Um, we've come into this time. And again, I encourage you to share that on, on Facebook if you're watching us live, and then um, we will definitely add that. If you do not want um, anybody else to see your prayers, you're welcome to message us. You can do, use Messenger. Um, you can um, email us if you like. Again, all our information is on both our Facebook and um, web pages, but let us know. Um, and the reason that this um, this has become so important for me is what I've done over the past is I've prayed over each of the um, concerns lifted up at that moment. And then as a community, as a congregation, as we have gathered, we've said, Lord, hear our prayer. Because I think it's so important that we share that in community and know that other people are praying for you. And again, every prayer that you lift up for us, you know, and even those prayers that you don't lift up, God knows what's in your heart. Even though you don't type them or send them or say them to anybody else, God knows your prayers. And I really want you to feel like you're in a time of, um, I don't know, just a time of peace. So let's go into a time of prayer. Gracious God, I, I thank you for all that you are doing. I thank you for the love and the compassion that you were showing. I thank you for the people who are watching this. God, I know that, that your generosity and your love is, is powerful. That you, um, I don't know, I, just you draw us closer to who you are and what we are doing. God, there are so many right now who are watching this, who are, um, um, as we focus on the candle, as we, as we think about that flickering, let us draw in closer to you. We have, there's so many people who are, are, are just hurting, who are confused, who are worried, who need something a little bit more. God, I pray right now that you strengthen those who need it. Strengthen their bodies. Cure the illnesses. Um, give us the medicines and the vaccines that we need to continue to be strong. Um, um, heal the cancers, um, heal the injuries. Continue to surround us, people, so we can we can grow stronger, not just in our physical strength, but in our emotional strength. God, surround us with those people who will lift us up. Let your presence be felt. Remind us that when we feel hopeless, that when we feel lost, that you are a God who's preparing a way for us. Strengthen us emotionally and mentally. Most important, God, Strengthen us uh, spiritually. We know that during this time, so many people drift away from you. They just maybe have stopped looking or they just lost hope or peace or love or joy. Whatever it is they need to be connected to you, God, heal those spiritually who need it. Lord, there are prayers being lifted up to you right now as we continue to work through this time. Lord, I pray that as we continue to focus on this candle, as we continue to focus on um, you, let us be drawn closer to who you are in us. Send us out, God, so we can be your hands and feet. Lord, as we pray with each other, hear our prayers. Remind us of your presence. God, we come to you now in this time, this time of love, this time of peace, this time of joy, and this time of hope. We pray the prayer that you taught us long ago. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, oh, thank you. I know that was a little rough going there, but as, we, as, we, as I tried to put myself in the place, um, I'm used to be able to see the people's face and see their needs. And without that, sometimes it's hard for me to get centered. But I know that you're there and you're watching and that uh, I just tried to connect into your presence. And I just pray that these times of prayers are lifting you up. So um, as we prepare for our message today, our, our church's theme this Advent is I'll be home for Christmas. And it's a, it's a little tongue-in-cheek. It's a little fun. Um, it's a little... Um, Oh, I don't know. Um, it's a great theme, but we know that right now, that for Christmas time, many of us will get a be, will be home. We won't get to travel. But know that we are all together and that there are ways for us to gather and be home for Christmas. And so as we move through this, I, I, I want us to prepare for this reading. Is, as For my particular sermon series, I'm working through some of the Old Testament readings. I'm working through um, um, Isaiah, and I'll, next week I'll be into 2 Samuel but um, one of the things I want to lift up to you as we work through this candle of peace, um, I'm going to be reading from Isaiah 40, but I want to just touch from um, the verse 39 that leads right before this. this is chapter 39, verse 8. eight and, and, and then Hakiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good, for the king was thinking, at least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. Again, this is what Hezekiah, Hezekiah, there you go, Hezekiah was saying to Isaiah, at least there will be peace during my lifetime. Let's go to our scripture reading. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, starting in verse 1. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting. Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make straight the highways through the wasteland for our God. Fill the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. A voice said, shout. I asked, what should I shout? Shout that people are like grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers fade in in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord, and so it will be with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops. Shout it louder. O Jerusalem, shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule, he will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will flee, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them closer to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So for me, I've chosen to take a little bit different. Kaisen, do I have that? There we go. Thank you. Um, for me, I've chosen to take a little bit different um, approach to um, our Advent series. I know that we are, are home for Christmas. But as I prepared for this, this Advent season, 
Um, I don't like to be alone. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm a very outgoing person. Those of you who know me know me. I'm very social. I want to be around people. I like my downtime, but again, being alone for a long time makes me depressed. And so I want to be around people. And so I'm the kind of person who likes to invite people over. I want to invite them to things we're doing. I want to gather with family. I want to gather with friends. I want to be around people. That way I can continue to kind of to fill my cup and, and laugh and celebrate because I find, I find joy and happiness in those things. But I realize that through Advent season, what, what are we, what, what is the purpose of Advent? Why are we doing, why do we do this? Why do we, why do we celebrate Advent? And we know that we are preparing for the birth of Christ, that we're taking this four-week time before Christmas to really prepare for the coming Christ. And one of the things, you know, when I was a kid, we only ever thought about Christmas, you know, about presents and the gifts we were going to get and the Christmas tree and all the stuff underneath it. And as it got us excited, you know, there really wasn't talk about anything else in my life. I knew that there was this guy named Jesus. I knew that there was a God. I believed in that, but I didn't understand any of it. Advent is a really kind of special time. I'm, I'm going to, I've said this before in other years, um, I never really got into Advent. And I'm not always a big fan of Christmas because, again, it's gotten um, tainted. Maybe that's the best word I can think of. It's gotten tainted and taken away from maybe what we are truly are supposed to be doing this time of year. And so as I thought about all of this, I'm thinking, man, how do I really push what Advent means to me? I came back and I found this, that, that invitation of hope video that we watched. That this is an opportunity for us to invite people into what we believe. And, and what's a more appropriate invitation than hope? An invitation to peace. An invitation to joy. An invitation to love. And eventually, an invitation to Christ. Now think about this. Church is important, but really what brought me to Christ wasn't just what happened at church. It was the invitation that I had received from people around me, those who cared about me, those who cared about my family, and wanted to help me grow in my faith as I had questions, as I was looking for a place to settle down and to become established. Um, I was invited. And again, I'm not asking people to invite people to church. What I'm asking people to do is as we think about hope, we think about peace, as we think about, as we think about love, sorry about that, as we think about all these things that we're going through, as we think about this stuff, what, what, is, what, what does the world need most right now? They need hope. They need love. They need peace. They need joy. And honestly, the world right now needs Christ. So I encourage you to invite people to watch us online. It's a very simple way to invite um, who we are and what we're doing at church without maybe having to step foot into church. Now again, don't get me wrong, being in church is very important. For me and my family, this time of COVID has been terrible because we like, as much as it's nice to play the music and have it on the screen, I want to be in person here with the people at the Ignite service as we celebrate our prayers and our concerns together, as we celebrate um, all these things together, we share food, we share communion, we do all that together. Right now, the only place we would get it, if you want to do communion, you can watch us on Wednesday morning and get a little bit of that, that word and table. Um, you can also watch us on the 1030 service and, and we'll talk about how you can do communi a communion at home. But again, it's different when you're in community. You know, I, I've, we've come to love this Ignite service because of the community, the being around each other, that invitation. And, and, and ultimately, that's what we need to go through. So as we think about this invitation, as we think about this invitation of peace, as we think about um, how do I invite somebody into um, peace? I, that's hard when you think about it. So we go back to our scripture. Um, and again, I, I led before we, we started reading the scripture was the, um, that what Hezekiah said to Isaiah. He, he's talking about for the, um, he was, he said, at least there will be peace and security during my time. Now he was talking about 
peace of war, you know, that there'll be no war, that, that, you know, we've gone through, as Israelites, we've gone through all these hard times, and at least there'll be peace in our time. At least, I know that there's going to be bad things that happen after me, but at least, because of my faithfulness, there'll be peace in our time. We know that the world is always going to be in turmoil. We know that the world is always going to have arguments and fights, and there are going to be all these things in this world that draw us away from God. And we're going to pray for peace. Will we have peace in our time? I hope so. I hope that that God continues to reveal himself in ways that at least the world that we live in around us can slow down and be peaceful. Now, we, living where we live, have endured um, lots of years of war peace, but we have other strifes and fighting that we do. And, and, And that's what makes the sin of the world so hard because we need to understand that while we don't always have, we might not be in, you know, in war, we, we, we aren't at peace. We're, we have infighting with other people and things that are going on. And it's really important that we don't get wrapped up into that. So where does the peace come from? Where do we as Christians find peace? And we know the answer is in Christ. The answer is always Jesus, right? The answer is always Jesus. Um, but it, it is in Christ. It's in this hope of what's coming that we know because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, because we know that God gave us Jesus Christ as we prepare for Advent and then eventually look forward to um, 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 Easter and, and all the time that comes before that, that we know that we can have internal peace because of our faith in Jesus, so that no matter what is going on around us, we can have peace. And, and, and this is what... Um, sorry for the clicking, Um, this is what um, Isaiah was saying. He's like, see, look, how do you invite them? I want you to comfort, comfort. When they repeat in the Bible, when they say comfort, comfort, it's really important. I really want you to comfort the people. Let them know it's going to be okay. You know, go, go back and read this after I'm done and really read these words in Isaiah 40. As, as we talk about shouting about what's going to happen, yes, our time on earth is short, that we are like the grass. We will wither away and we will disappear. That shouldn't cause us worry. We just know by looking at our family members that time over time that we will die. And, and that's okay. What gives us peace is not the fear of death. It's, it's the hope of everlasting life that comes from Jesus Christ, that comes from the gift of Jesus, that comes from this belief in, that belief in God, that as we gather together, that we can shout from the mountaintops that God has given us a gift, that God is preparing a time for us that we can be not so worried about the things of the world that are affecting us. Yes, there's going to continue to be hard times, but God gives us peace. And he sent in the form of a baby. Born alone in a manger. With, you know, you know the story. That it came in this most unusual way that God sent us peace on earth. And in that still moment, we sing songs about peace on earth and all the things that are going to happen because we know that no matter what happens, if we put our faith in Jesus Christ, if we, if we love God with everything we have, that no matter what's happening in the world, well, we'll, we'll at that moment, we're going to feel anger or fear or frustration, but it's that peace that God gives us that will draw us through it. That it's, it's the people that surround us those people who are hurting, the invitation of peace that we make them to them will make the difference in their life. So when I come along a person who's really struggling and I invite them to have dinner with me or um, to go get coffee, socially distant or however you want to do it, but I, I invite them to spend some time with them and I hear their stories, I hear what they're struggling from and then I share the invitation of here is how I found peace when I was going through something similar as you. You share that love. You share that hope. You share that joy. We share that peace. And for me, that's what this season is all about, is we continue to share the invitation of the gifts that Jesus gave to us, that God gave to us through Jesus. And these are so important. 
So I, I pray that as we continue to move through this Advent series, and we think about each of these candles as they're being lit, and the light that they cause, um, the, the light that they distribute. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things about Christmas is the lighting of the candles on Christmas Eve. And I love it. And again, I never got it when I first got into my faith. I never got the whole purpose of it. But as I've grown, the candles have meant so much to me. And that's one of the reasons I use it as a visual this month. Because these candles have meant so much to me. Because one candle by itself gives me enough room to maybe light up the space right in front of me so I can kind of see. But as we gather more and more candles together, the world gets brighter. As we share our candle with another person, the world gets brighter. And the more candles that are shared, the more that we can see. And this is what I think is most important. When you are lost out in the darkness and you can see nothing, maybe but despair and worry and fear, and then in the darkness, you see a small single light. And as you get closer, that light gets brighter. And you notice that it's not just one light, it's five lights, 20 lights, 15 lights. And you're drawn in to this light, to this hope, to this peace, to this love, to this joy that we have. And those lights, the warmth that comes that light, that beckons us out of the darkness. That light invites us into something else, especially when we're lost. When, especially when we're lost. You know, the Bible talks about you don't light a candle and put a basket on top of it. You hold it up so the world can see it. That's what Advent's about. As we light these candles, we provide more light. But what needs to do to really make an impact is to share that light with other people. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you as always for this time. I pray that the message you've given me continues to draw all of us closer to you. Lord, I know that it is struggle, it's hard out there and it's hard to, to be that person who's going to go out and just maybe make that cold call. Maybe it's somebody we haven't talked to in a long time and, and we know that we should, you're putting on a heart that we need to reach out to them. We just don't know what to do. Give us the courage to go out and, 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 and call that person up and check in with them and see how they're doing. And God, show us what you're going to do through that call through that connection, through that invitation that you give us. Remind us that the simplest things can have the most impact, that a single candle can light hundreds and thousands of other candles and make a light so bright that people around the world can see it. God, put us in that place so we can be that for everyone. Amen. Um, the other thing that we do here is um, we go into a time of celebration. And I love our time of celebration. Because this is the part where if you want to share the joys and the happiness, the things that are going on in your life, again, I encourage you to share them on our Facebook page right now. Let us know the things you want to celebrate. Because if we were all here at the community, you would lift up your celebration. And as a community, we together, we would say, thank you, God. And we would celebrate with you in person. So again, I encourage you right now to, if you have any celebrations you want to lift up, um, birthdays and anniversaries, I'm 47. This week on Monday was my birthday. Monday? Sunday? Tuesday? Tuesday! Tuesday was my birthday. And so I celebrated my 47th birthday. Um, my anniversary's coming up here in a couple weeks. Um, um, Christmas is coming. We just had Thanksgiving. There's so many wonderful things to celebrate. Even though we don't get to, to celebrate with our family, maybe you got to Zoom with them and you got to talk to them or you, you did maybe a, a virtual Thanksgiving, whatever that looked like. But again, there's, there's new fun ways to celebrate things. We celebrate in our family, um, um, our college students making a home safe. Um, we celebrate um, kind of just finding new ways to celebrate this year. I know it's been hard, but we're finding new unique ways to celebrate Christmas this year, Advent, and, and this time of year. And so whatever those may be, I know that I, I get to read the prayer chain, and, and there is healing happening. People are coming out of the hospital, um, in some cases, numbers are coming down, deaths are going down. I know that we don't always see all the good numbers, but there is a lot of good happening, that God is still doing miracles, that God is still doing things um, that give us an opportunity to celebrate. The other piece of this time is we get to celebrate our tithes. We get to celebrate the gifts that we give. And again, it's so important that we continue to give um, to our church, to the ministries and ministry to the missions and ministries that we're doing. It's important that we continue to not just give our physical gifts, I mean, our, our, 
our monetary gifts, but our physical gifts. You know, what are we good at? How do we take them out and give them to the people of the world, to our community, to the kids around us, to the, to the elderly around us? And then most importantly, how are you sharing your spiritual gifts? Find out what your spiritual gifts is. Learn more about your spiritual gifts and find out how you can use that spiritual gift to make better invitations to people. Because one of the reasons I found it was hard to invite people um, into what I believed because I was doing it outside my spiritual gift. But when I do it within my spiritual gift, it happens just naturally. Whether it's healing or, or generosity or a prophecy or whatever it may be, whatever your, your spiritual gift is, when you use that, it is so much easier to invite people. So I'm going to pray over all the, uh, uh, the um, celebrations being lifted up right now, the ones that are your heart, the ones that you're just lifting up to God, and then, um, and then we'll move on. Gracious God, we thank you for this time of celebration. We thank you for the work that you are doing. I thank you for the people that you are surrounding me with. I thank you for um, the peace that you have given me. I thank you for the peace and the tranquility that you put in our heart. I thank you for the love and the joy and the hope that is in this world. I pray that nobody forgets that you are a God of gifts, that you continue to look at us like your children. Those who who call you Abba, who, who call out to you, Father, hear my prayers. God, answer them and continue to answer them. Continue to bless them. Lord, as we draw closer to you in this time, I I thank you for the healing that you're doing. I thank you for the people you're putting in this world. I thank you for the power of your message, the power of scripture, the power of a single candle flame. And then how on a cold and dark night, that single flame can give us all that we need. And that we know that as we share that candle with others, that it will grow in strength, in light, and in warmth, and it will draw people together, and we will continue to be strengthened. God, I pray that each person who listens to this is blessed. God, I pray that you take our gifts, our monetary gifts, our physical gifts, and our spiritual gifts, and you multiply them. Use them in a way that will strengthen your church, your missions, your ministries, and the people who call you Father the people who call you Lord. Let the gifts that we have draw people closer to you. Encourage us and strengthen us to invite those to come and meet you. God, we lift all of this up to you and it's in your holy and perfect name we pray. Amen. Um, Our next song is very fitting as we go back to our scripture and we think about the importance of shouting to the world of the generosity and the love of God and that we need to continue to shout. So join us in singing, Shout to the North.
One of the things that we were called to do, and this is really important, as we listen to um, some of that scripture in Isaiah, is that we were called to make the path clear, that we were to straighten the curves, that we were to flatten the obstacles. That is so important. As, as we help prepare other people to find their way to Christ, it is our job to eliminate the obstacles so they have better access to the hope and the love and the peace and the joy that Christ is going to do. As we end in this time, um, there's another part of Isaiah, Isaiah 43, um, 18 and 19 that I absolutely love, and I'm going to share that for you in a moment. Because one of the things that we are reminded by God, and I think this is important, and it's important to um, the Israelites at that time, it's important for us right now, is that you ain't seen nothing yet. That God is going to continue to do amazing things. And, and, and that's what's being said here um, in, in, in Isaiah 43. God says, but forget all of that. Forget all of the stuff I've done already. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Don't, do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers and dry wastelands. That if we do our part, God will come in and help us do it. We don't do this alone. With those we light the candle with come alongside of it. But God will also come in and create that path. And I, I want us to continue to share that invitation of peace with all those who are looking for that and who want to join in with that. So again, I encourage you to go out, reconnect with people you haven't talked to in a while, and share the peace of Christ with all of them. Go in peace and have a great week.